The overall population of female prisoners is rapidly growing in the United States. The number of women serving sentences for more than one year grew by 757% between 1977 and 2004. This is nearly twice the 388% increase in the male prison population. Although women comprise about 10% overall, they represent the fastest growing population within jails and prisons. The Bureau of Justice Statistics survey data from 2004 estimates that the percentage of pregnant women entering state correctional settings is 4%. This 4% estimate is feasibly conservative, as other peer-reviewed articles state higher percentages ranging from 6 to 10%, which is roughly the same percentage for the U.S. population on the outside. Much of the research in academic literature is from a macro-level lens addressing larger social contexts, such as the negative impacts on families, communities, and the harsh punitive policies of the criminal justice system. The efficacy of services that doulas provide to pregnant people in prisons fits into a micro-level lens of individual experience. Doulas offering services in a correctional setting often expand the typical definition of doula to encompass a broader advocacy piece embedded in a reproductive justice framework. Currently, there are only a few organizations that specifically do this work. Our research was based on the assumption that current health care services provided by state correctional institutions are inadequate for the unique conditions of pregnant people and parents. We set out to find answers to these questions. Do doula services for incarcerated people play a role in improving birth outcomes in terms of overall satisfaction from emotional, physical, and informational support? And could these services improve the potentiality of a positive transition out of the prison industrial complex? We launched two surveys, one geared towards individual doulas and the other geared towards doula organizations. Our survey was sent out via email, Facebook, and Tumblr to doulas in the United Kingdom and the United States. We received 48 responses to the individual doula survey and eight organizational survey responses. In addition to the survey, we interviewed five people, three doulas and two formerly incarcerated women, one who had been a part of the doula program and one who didn't have access to such a program. On average, doulas had been active for four years. 44% had obtained a formal certification and 40% had not. Out of our 48 respondents, only 17% had worked with incarcerated persons. Those that had worked with incarcerated persons perceived that less pain medication was utilized during birth. Interestingly enough, there was a statistically significant relationship between doulas who had no certification and the rating of reproductive justice as one of the top reasons for becoming a doula.
The survey responses also showed a significant relationship between how doulas perceive educational and informational support delivered compared to physical and emotional support delivered in the rankings of maternal health, educational support, and advocacy as reasons for being a doula. We were not surprised to find the overwhelming opinion that informational and educational support delivered to inmates is just as important as physical and emotional support. Interviewees indicated doula help with parenting, domestic violence survivorship, creating and formulating plans for course of action upon release, navigating this child protection service system, and providing a connection to resources in general as invaluable. Responses to our open-ended survey question regarding doula services and post-incarceration outcomes for prisoners resulted in these key words from respondents. Power and empowerment, when combined, was the root word that linked to all others. Findings that were more surprising were implicit in what they provide around birth that is not so narrowly defined. Advocating for basic rights. For example, prison doulas expressed frustration that pregnant prisoners are often not given access to certain things they have rights to, such as a wedge pillow for comfort, assignment to a bottom bunk, diet plans, and access to more food. But if they advocate too much and challenge the existing authority of the prison, they risk their credibility. This reflects a constant tension inherent in the work they do. We found that relationship building is crucial and is reflected in respectful language choice when interacting with incarcerated persons. The doulas we interviewed do not engage in the stereotype of female prisoners as manipulative. Treating inmates respectfully, removing social and political structures embedded in institutional language, by using their preferred gender pronouns and first names instead of offender and talking to them in a non-dehumanizing manner has not only created a reciprocal environment of mutual respect, it appears to lend itself to positive changes in perspective, such as hope, feeling valued, and advocating for yourself, and potentially reduces the likelihood of reoffending. We found a significant role prison doulas play in creating a platform for community building. The classes offered at the Washington Correctional Center for Women are not only for pregnant people, but parents as well. People we interviewed also called classes a support group and thought doulas do community building more than anything, as well as being resources for them for information. For many, they are people's only connection to resources. The prison doulas we interviewed have moved their organization from a nonprofit model to a reproductive justice collective model in collaboration with people on the inside. They view it as a social project together instead of solely being service providers. Many barriers exist when doing this type of work. The three doulas that we interviewed mentioned that their organization has a high turnover rate. The issues of vicarious trauma is one of the many reasons contributing to this. The emotional toll of providing support for persons who lost their sense of pride and support is wearing, and many doulas wear their hearts on their sleeves. This is only augmented by the difficult power structures you have to navigate in order to work within the prison structure. A lack of communication between the doula organizations and the prisons has been cited as one of the main barriers to this type of work. Oh. And how did the birth attendants, now called the Prison Doula Project, get started in Olympia, Washington? Almost 11 years ago, an Evergreen student called the Washington Correctional Center for Women to inquire about what services were available for pregnant prisoners. The woman who answered the phone, a correctional supervisor, was very interested in the topic. She had just given birth. With the help of a doula, the rest is history. When we embarked on this journey, we expected to conduct a very different type of project. We had not taken into account how challenging it would be to gain access to incarcerated persons. We had to reevaluate who we were going to be focusing on. As our focus shifted towards doulas, we noticed that there is not a lot of research on this topic, nor a lot of people doing this type of work. With a significantly small population that is very private, we struggled to make connections, but when we finally did, it was eye-opening. 
This is not a new issue, but this approach to dealing with it is certainly new. This type of work is important and must be researched further. In order to expand the movement, we must expand knowledge. The old idiom of knowledge is power applies here, but change is only possible if there is access to that knowledge. Our research indicated that these services would likely reduce recidivism. We say, let's test that theory.